Today, I'm going to talk about how to slow down the aging process. If you want to look younger, live longer, and have fewer diseases, then this video is for you. Now, I know I don't look 75 years old, okay? And it's probably because I'm not 75 years old, I'm 59. But what I'm going to show you is based on a huge deep dive into this longevity topic. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of the mitochondria before, but the mitochondria is the energy factory. And so you're going to be as healthy or live as long as your mitochondria is functioning and in good shape. So without getting into too much biochemistry, if you've taken a biology class, you may remember there's something called the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle is basically a little circle. It's like an assembly line. And there's various steps and different chemicals involved in this little assembly line. And it starts with food that enters this Krebs cycle and it ends with energy. And I think the biggest thing that was missing when I studied the Krebs cycle was something called cofactors. This Krebs cycle requires nutrients to go from A to B to C. Because if you're missing a certain nutrient, instead it becomes bottlenecked and things back up and you're not going to be able to make the energy and so by this additional understanding of nutrients related to the Krebs cycle, we can quickly see that in order to turn glucose or fat into energy, we need nutrients. And the reason I'm even bringing this up is that I'm leading up to this one molecule. It's called NAD. And NAD is involved in extracting energy from food. NAD is a very vital molecule in helping you live long. And the energy that it's going to make is called ATP. It's also involved in preventing muscle loss, especially if someone has cancer. It's also involved in protecting you against radiation. And here's the big thing you need to know. As we age, the NAD decreases. Researchers have found that there's this thing that has eaten up NAD. And this thing is called CD38. In mice studies, when they're born without this CD38, they live a long life. They don't have a lot of health problems. So there are five compounds that you can start getting from your diet that can then keep your NAD very high so you can live a long life. So let's start with the first one. It's called epigenin. Parsley has the most epigenin of all plants that I could find. The next one on the list is thyme. Then we get oregano basil, celery. These are various spices and herbs that you can use on your food on a regular basis. Okay, number two, anthoxanthin. And you can get this in the following foods. Blueberries. Anything blue, purple, or even red has high amounts of this particular natural chemical. Elderberry is really also good for your immune system. Then we have the Concord grape. Purple potatoes, okay, are loaded with this. The next one is called curcumin. And you might already know that one is in the turmeric spice. And then the next phytonutrient is called quercetin. And the food that has the highest quercetin is the onion. Most of the quercetin is in the outer part of the onion, okay? So when you peel the onion, don't peel it too deep. And then we have the apple skin. And of course, apples are high in sugar, right? Well, if you just ate the skin of the apple, you would get a lot of quercetin. And then the last one on the list is called methylene blue. Now, this is not a plant. This is a synthetic dye. This was actually the first drug that was ever invented. They used to use it for many different things, but it seems to be a good inhibitor of this CD38, which can then increase the NAD and increase your longevity. If you haven't seen my video on methylene blue, this might tie this whole topic together for you. So for that information, you should watch this video next right here. Today, we're going to discuss something called methylene blue. Now, I haven't done a video on this ever simply because it's not a natural remedy. It's actually a synthetic drug, but it is sold over the counter and it's been around for a very long time. And it has some fascinating properties that I think you need to know about. Now, it was discovered in 1876, if I'm not mistaken, and it was the first fully synthetic drug in medicine. It was used as one of the first antibiotics. It was used as one of the first antipsychotic drugs. In 1891, it was used for malaria. In fact, nowadays, even the uh, emergency room doctors uh, have it 
ready if someone has either cyanide poisoning or carbon monoxide poisoning. And so it is a compound that creates some very interesting effects. At lower doses, it can act as an antioxidant. And I'm talking about the dose of uh, 0.5 milligrams to 4 milligrams per kilogram weight. So, for example, I weigh 185 pounds, okay? That's roughly around 84 kilograms. So if you do the math, I would need per day roughly on the low end about 42 drops because it comes in a liquid. And uh, in one drop, you have 0.5 milligrams. So if I were going to take it, I would take like uh, 10 drops in some water four times a day. And if you're going to try this remedy, I would definitely make sure you get the USP pharmaceutical grade at 1% solution, which will give you about 0.5 milligrams per drop. So what type of conditions would methylene blue potentially help someone with? Well, septic shock, uh, especially if the blood pressure has dropped significantly. Anaphylaxis, which is anaphylactic shock, a very severe allergy reaction. If someone had a virus because it has very potent antiviral properties, it's good for brain fog, memory loss. It's been studied to help people with depression, or anti-candida properties as well. It also apparently is really effective in tissues that demand high amounts of oxygen, which I'm going to explain in a little bit why, like neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. It's even good for things like gout because it can help break down uric acid. Uh, in low doses, it acts as an antioxidant as well as an anti-inflammatory. So typically anything that involves mitochondrial dysfunction can benefit from methylene blue. So what I want to explain is um, how it actually works. What is it doing in the body? Which is actually a, this is very interesting. So what it does in the body, it acts as an artificial electron recycler. Now, let me kind of explain this. Let's envision you have a battery, right? And batteries are filled with these electrons that are stored, right? And so you need these electrons to generate energy. And you also have electrons going on in your body as well, in the mitochondria. In fact, your body converts food into electrons stored in the ATP molecule for energy. And so in our mitochondria, we have a lot of electron transfer exchange going on. Methylene blue apparently has the ability to remove or add electrons depending on what part of the body needs them or it doesn't need them. So it seems to help correct this shuffling around of electrons, which medically has this term called redox cycling. So this is one of the reasons why um, this could give someone with fatigue more energy. Now, since we're talking about uh, the mitochondria and this is the heart of your metabolism in the conversion from food into energy, oxygen is also involved. So methylene blue helps the mitochondria absorb and transport oxygen. It actually improves the way the body uses oxygen. And so you can imagine all the different problems that this could potentially help someone with. Now, there is some contraindications. Uh, if someone is uh, taking um, an SSRI, which for depression, for example, you wouldn't want to take this as the potential side effect of increasing too much serotonin. And of course, before taking something like this, check with your doctor just to make sure there's no contraindications. But I wanted to put this at least on your radar so you can understand a little bit more and um, you can maybe buy a book and, and read up on it. But I think it could potentially help a lot of people with certain problems related to this oxygen and uh, electron transfer issue inside the mitochondria. Now, since we're on the topic of this mitochondrial dysfunction, if you haven't seen this video, you might want to check it out.